So today I'm gonna to run you through three breakfast ideas that you've probably never heard of. Now it's kind of tricky to say that because my audience is super global. So I've chosen something from Middle East, South America and Asia and hopefully there's something in there that you've never heard of and it inspires you to cook something different for breakfast. First up the Middle East with full medallas. Let's get stuck in. So what is it? I'm glad you asked. It's basically a fava bean stew uh, served with tomatoes on top and onions, flatbread and some hard boiled eggs. So I've got some eggs in here boiling. I'm gonna do them for seven minutes. I'm not a huge fan of like super hard boiled eggs. So seven minutes and we'll pull those out. So I've got some cooked fava beans. I soaked these overnight and then I cooked them in water. If you can't find them in a can, you should be able to find the dried ones. They're not like super common in a can here in Australia. I've got a pan here over a high heat. I'm gonna add my beans and then just a little bit of water, say a cup of water, and we're just gonna cook those down until we can kind of mash them. So to that, we're gonna add a bit of cumin, about a tablespoon, and a big pinch of salt. Just let that do its thing. So we've got an onion. We're just gonna dice this up nice and fine. And we're gonna add most of that onion to a bowl. Save some for garnish at the end. And this is a good time to shout out the Golden Balance. He is uh, also a food creator and I saw this on one of his shorts he did a while ago. I made it and it was delicious. So I think this is mum's recipe or kind of my take on his mum's recipe. So thank you for the inspiration, brother. So take a mortar and pestle, green chili and some garlic. I'm gonna go three cloves, pinch of salt and then just pound that into a smooth paste. All right, my eggs are done. Just gonna pull these out one second. Please hold the line. Add your paste to your onions. Now you don't want these to dry out because we're gonna mash these. So just keep, keep an eye on them. Make sure they don't completely dry out. To the onions, we're gonna add lemon juice. Oh, there's a lot of seeds in that one. That was, that was silly, Andrew. Ideally without the seeds, I'm actually gonna go two lemons. And there's no seeds in that one. Where were you when I needed you? And then a good glug of olive oil. A good glug, what a great measurement for a cooking show. I'm gonna say that's three tablespoons. A cooking show. Sounds a bit official for my liking. I'm just some bloke cooking in his kitchen and his bare feet. All right, give that a mix. And that's ready for our beans when they're mashed up. The other thing we're gonna need some tomato, just diced up. Now you can take the seeds out if you want or leave them in. I like to leave them in. But that's just garnish for the top as well. See how our beans are doing. We basically want these to mash up. There's a bit of debate as to whether, like how much you mash these. I think some people keep them pretty chunky. Some people kind of really go to town on them. Start mashing them now. I reckon that's my desired level of mashness. A little bowl of flavor, and these go. Time to plate up. So we're just gonna fold this oil and garlic and chili through this nice and evenly. I'll tell you what, I sneaked a few of these fava beans while they were cooking, and they are delicious as a bean. I don't know why we don't eat more of them down here. We grow a lot of broad beans down here. It's like this, the same shops just have always have the same beans. It's a whole new world of beans. We've got our egg, our tomato. It's a fairly generous portion, to be perfectly honest, but it's all right. Some more onion, another good drizzle of olive oil. Eggs optional, and I think they normally do it hard boiled, but like I was saying, I'm a huge fan of hard boiled eggs. Bit of flatbread, done. Now that's a hearty, healthy breakfast. Full madamas. I guess we better have a taste. It smells delicious. Mm. Yum. It's hearty and savory, nice and fresh with the tomatoes in there as well, and the fresh onion. I love raw onion. Maybe not the best like first thing in the morning, but I guess it's brekkie. You gotta brush your teeth afterwards anyway. Delicious. All right, next up, our wrappers. So for the dough, you're gonna need this which is a type of cornmeal, but unlike cornmeal that you get in uh, most of the Western world, it's cooked. It's, there's like a really famous brand, which I think it's called Pam. I don't have the packet for here, sorry, but oh, I've done that the wrong way around. That's all right. Mistakes happen. I'll put that in after we put the water in, which I have here. So add the water to a bowl. I'll link below to the brand that this is, because I don't have the packet. I'm guessing there's other brands, but I'm not sure. It's the only one that I've kind of seen. Uh, season with salt, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Get yourself a wooden spoon and start adding the cornmeal. And it feels really wet, but it will, um, it'll hydrate. I think I'm guessing because it's cooked, it takes a bit longer to hydrate than like flour would normally. Just mix it until you've got a, a paste effectively, and then we'll rest it for a few minutes and it should firm up nicely. Not as firm as like a, a bread dough is normally. I guess it's like a masa almost. It's already firming up already. Clean the sides down, cover it with a tea towel so the top doesn't dry out. Come back in a couple of minutes. You get a tray ready, 
a bit of oil on it so that they don't stick. We're also gonna oil our hands to stop the dough from sticking to my hand. So, dough, nicely hydrated now. I like to call that a tennis ball size amount of dough. Make it into a nice tight ball. You can be fancy and weigh this out if you want so you have perfectly even pieces. If I was in a restaurant, I would do that. I'm at home, not gonna. And the great thing about these is that they're actually pretty easy to pull together. They're a great weekend thing to make because you know, you're not waiting for a you know, yeast of dough to rise. Um, I think they've got a really great texture and you can kind of fill them with whatever you want. You know, we're gonna keep it real, I guess, classic to this part of the world. We're just gonna go bacon, eggs, some avocado, maybe a little bit of mayonnaise. Happy days. All right, I've ended up with one small one, but that's okay. I'm gonna die, I'll eat that. Yeah, okay, I've got a big cast iron pan that's been heating up for a while. I was gonna turn the heat up on that a bit. I like using cast iron. Um, you don't put any grease in there, but you do like, again, oil your hands. Take up one of your pieces of dough and you're just gonna flatten it out into a circle shape. Keep it as round as you can. Make sure it's kind of evenly uh, thick all over and then into the pan. So you're just looking for nice color on the bottom. These will get cooked to ice. We'll put them through the oven after this, kind of when we're ready to serve. At the moment, we're just really focusing on setting that, that outside dough, I guess. So I've got a tray with a rack for them to go on after, which is what we'll cook them in the oven on. All right, it's been about four minutes. Time to flip. It shouldn't take as long on the other side. And we are kind of looking for these to puff up. And that way we can kind of cut into them and we can make a sandwich out of them. Last one made them, they didn't puff up until they're in the oven. All right, these are ready to come out onto this tray. Get the other ones in there, and then we'll get the rest of our toppings ready. Fillings, I should say, not really toppings, don't we? All right, these ones are off too. These go into the oven at 250 degrees for about five or six minutes. So while those are in the oven, we're just gonna fry some eggs. I've got my bacon, cheese, and avocado ready. Non-stick pan, a couple of eggs in there. And if you need to know how to cook an egg, click up here, because there's 21 ways to cook an egg. Here we go. This is what we're looking for. You see these have puffed up. It's what we want. Kind of like a pita bread. So we can cut open them and then fill them up. So I'm just going to fill a couple of these. Then to open, just going to put a small thin knife and run it around the edge. And the first thing we want in there is some cheese. So it goes all nice and melty. Just let that melt down a bit. Next, we've got a bit of bacon, American bacon because I'm with my American friends and I like streaky bacon, I don't like the other stuff. I don't not like it, but I prefer streaky. Some avocado. Fried eggs. There you go, my take on breakfast at Apples. All right, I guess we better taste it. I don't actually know if this is like traditional to have bacon and eggs in this. So I'm sorry if it's not. Ooh, how good's that runny yolk? It's pretty good. It's really good, but definitely need some hot sauce. I don't care what anyone says. This is not sponsored. This is the best commercially available hot sauce there is. It's delicious. And it's not just because it's bacon, egg, and cheese. It's an incredible combo. I think it's because of the, the actual adapter itself. You know, it holds together. It's got a great flavor and a flavor that we're not used to, or I'm not used to as a, a Westerner living in Australia. It's a good flavor. A kind of cornmeal kind of flavor. I really enjoy it, but it holds together really well, but it's got a good chew and you can bite through it. It's not like eating, you know, a piece of sourdough where you can't bite through it. So I think for this application, when you're stuffing stuff in it, incredible. All right, next up, another great breakfast one for when you're on the go, Jiang Bing. So what is it? Well, it's a savory crepe, but this is kind of a, I guess a very westernized version just because of the ingredients some of them aren't super common like i couldn't find it so it's wheat flour and then they use mung bean flour in china i couldn't find mung bean flour anywhere i'm sure if i looked hard enough i probably could but if i can't find it then it seems silly to give you guys a recipe for it as well so one cup of flour i'll put it in grams down below as well and then instead of the mung bean flour i'm going to use rye flour now if you didn't have rye flour you could also use just wholemeal flour but you want something with a bit of flavor Half a cup of that. And then we're gonna add two and a half cups of water. Just gonna whisk this together so we have a batter. We'll let that rest for a few minutes while we get the rest of our ingredients together. So what else are you gonna need? Generic chili garlic sauce, a sesame paste, or this isn't, uh, sorry, not a sesame, um, soya bean paste. This isn't a soya bean, this is kind of a more of a sesame based one. But you want something that's kind of fermented a little bit sweet. Again, this is a real choose your own journey type of thing. If you can't find this, you could use like a little bit of miso let down, or you could just go with the chili sauce. Sesame seeds, 
It's breakfast, so eggs, of course. Crackers, now this seems very odd. In China, they'll fry off some, um, some crackers in oil. I've just got some store-bought crackers instead of making them. And I really like that idea because you get this really nice crunchy kind of component to it. And then on the fresher side of life, scallions, some lettuce, and some coriander. So we'll just get some spring onions finely sliced. Now coriander's pretty, pretty good like that. If you've got any big stalks, you'd probably pull them out, but I think like that's fine. And our lettuce, you know, and kind of pieces like that is also good to go. This will happen pretty quickly. Effectively, we're gonna make a crepe in this really nice big cast iron pan. If you don't have a big cast iron, you can use a non-stick if you want to. I'd probably stick away from a stainless steel. You want something that's nicely seasoned um, to eliminate the chances of it sticking. We're gonna make our crepe, put our egg on there, spin that around, sesame seeds, and then we'll start layering it up. All right, now I don't have one of those fancy crepe spoons because I'm not a big spoon, rod thing, whatever you call it. I'm not a big fan of like single use items in the kitchen. I don't make crepes that often. You should start. I should start. Yes, chef. Uh, but make sure you've got a, 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 some heat in your pan as a, as a starting point. And oil, so some peanut oil, not heaps. Not nothing though also, but do spread this out so it's nice and even. This is called a stepped palette knife because it goes down and I've got a step spatula as well. Just kind of easier to get in and around. The reason that you kind of like the crepe plates that you see them using in markets and outdoors that there's no sides, so they're easier to scrape around. Those are also kind of really well seasoned often. often. Uh, here's me making excuses for why my first one sticks. It won't stick, will it Des? Nope. No. Okay, this pan has started to smoke, which means it's actually probably a little bit too hot for what we want. So we just turned it off. I'm gonna let that just come down in temperature a little bit. So what you're gonna do is pull the batter in, spread it out, and then just kind of leave it to set. What we don't want is it to like, the batter to hit the pan and it just fry instantly. All right, this pan's cooled enough for my liking. In we go with our batter. Probably a bit more sizzle than I really wanted. And we're gonna spread it out. You want it nice and thin. Cool. We're just gonna let this set up a bit and then we'll crack our eggs in there. I'm just gonna do one egg for the size of a correct. Turn the heat back up, just so you know. I did have a little tear there and I've kind of, and that was because I was overzealous with my ladling. Just put a little bit more batter in there and that should sort that out. You can see the importance of a, a nicely seasoned cast iron. We do want a bit of color here. We kinda of wanna set that bottom of that crepe just to get it a little bit crunchy. It's just gonna hold the integrity of the whole dish together. So you see them, when they make these on the street, they, they literally take like a minute. It's gonna take longer um, in, your, in your home. It's gonna take you about five minutes, I reckon. Whatever you do, don't panic. Crack an egg in the center, and then using your palette knife, break that yolk, and then spread the whole thing around. Sesame seeds. Spring onion. See how it's looking underneath. Good, good, happy, happy. A little bit more color, and I want that egg to set up a bit more. Time for the flip in a second. I'm not nervous, you're nervous, Mitchell. There's a great lesson in controlling temperature on these pans. It's a really vital part of learning to cook, um, is learning to control temperature. And you can see here, there's like whispers of, of smoke. It means it's getting, you know, where I want it. If it starts getting more than that, you'll, you'll turn it down. But it's one of those things, it's like anything in life, it just comes with practice. It comes with intuition, you kind of figure it out over time. Whee! All right, this is where we start putting in our flavors. We've got our little sweet paste here. Turn the temperature down a bit, you can see that's getting a bit hot. Chili sauce. Chili sauce. Hello. Thank you. Our crackers. A little bit of lettuce, some coriander. Fold it over. Once again, we cut it in half. Oh no. Oh no, bro. I didn't cut it all the way. Stack them on top. There you go. Jiang Bing. Pretty happy with that, especially since it was the first one. I'm gonna let that cool for a second and we'll have a taste. Good for a taste. Stunning. Super savory crepe. Nice, the sweet sauce from that soybean sauce. That's not soybean. <laughs> a little bit of spice from that chili sauce. 
The crunch from the crackers really works and the freshness from the lettuce and the coriander, what is not to like about that? Well, I hope I've inspired you to make something a little bit different for breakfast this weekend or during the week for your loved ones or just for yourself. Believe it or not, there's only like 35% of you that actually subscribe to this channel who watch these videos regularly. So do me a favor and just smash that subscribe button. Anyway, legends, like this video, we're taking you from it and we'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace.